Bada boom, bada bang. Look at that, FF Blast Max versus Fresh Foam X. We got a lot of names here. Two soft everyday running shoes we're comparing today, Glide Ride Max 1080 B14. And if you are looking for a new soft shoe, you already know what I'm gonna say, don't you? Go head over to the Supwell app, $1 a month. Link is in the description below. Supwell app is the best place to buy, sell, and trade gently used running shoes. It's the best place to connect with other hobby joggers. It's the best place to go if you wanna up your best when it comes to the training and when it comes to getting motivation daily. You guys knew I was gonna land the plane on daily, didn't you? I told you, I'm like the shoe game, run game, Trevor Noah out here. These other boys on the John Oliver dropping every week, it's not gonna move numbers. But yeah, check out the Subwell app, $1 a month. I am leaving the $1 a month pricing open for, I'm not sure how long. That's the day one pricing. We're gonna have it at $1 a month for a little bit longer and then anybody else who joins after that, we're raising the prices. The price of the brick is going up. And we're gonna be adding some more functionality on the app soon. So stay tuned. Thanks to everyone who signed up. Let's get into today's video. So much stack, I can't even hold it all. So this morning I wanted to do a comparison of two of the best of these soft shoes to hit the market recently. We have the New Balance 1080 V13. I put 100 miles on this guy in one week and it stood up really well to that. So I have a lot of experience running this. Last run I didn't, it was Shakeout before the Chicago Marathon. And then the Asics Glide Ride Max, which is Weirdly become a super underrated slept on shoe. I have no, I, I have no idea why, because everything Asics drops seems to get a lot of pop and a lot of buzz, but this one has flown under the radar. My best guess is because the Glycerin Max and the Mag Max came out around the same time. The Mag Max came out, my memory, if my memory serves correct, two weeks before this, and then the Glycerin Max came out three weeks after. So this is buried between two big releases, but it has a new foam from Asics, FF Blast Max. And you can see as I'm pushing it in here, it's a soft foam and underfoot, it's nice, comfortable, and bouncy. And it's actually the foam that's going to be in the Nova Blast 5. So debuting some new technology for Asics, also bumping up the stack height of previous Glide Ride shoes. And this generation is a big departure from the Glide Ride 3, which I did not try. And there is last time I did a video on this shoe, some folks were saying they were disappointed in it because it was such a big departure from the Glide Ride 3. And that one was firmer and faster and peppier. I have no experience with that shoe. So my only frame of reference is comparing this to other shoes on the market. And I've enjoyed it a lot so far. Good roll, good comfort, good bounce. And I like the way that these two foams work together. It hasn't been a fast workout shoe for me. And I think the past generation of glide rides, the glide ride three and the previous ones were workout shoes. This is definitely not a workout shoe. Same thing with the 1080. And that's why I wanted to do the comparison here because these are both soft comfort everyday shoes, similar price point, 170 for the glide ride max, 165 for the 1080 soft foams underfoot designed for cruising so we'll get we're going to take the glide ride max out today and we'll see which one of these is going to be best for most people out there i have to say right off the bat i've really enjoyed all my miles in the 1080 and i've really enjoyed all my miles in the glide ride max so if you like soft shoes these are two awesome picks if you don't like soft shoes check out the soft shoes soft shoes check out the supernova prima check out the hoka Skyflow, check out the Puma Mag Max. There's a lot of good shoes out there that aren't soft, but these are, are two of the best soft ones. So quick comparison here. Glide Ride Max is a tiny bit taller. Running Warehouse measures this around 44, 45, 46 millimeters in the back. I've got to say it doesn't feel that high to me. They measured the 1080 around 38, 39, 40 millimeters in the back both of these have six millimeter drops and visually looking here and let's check from the back 
you can see I test it does not look like the glide ride max is significantly taller and underfoot it doesn't feel like it's significantly taller let's take a look from the side as well now glide ride max and 1080 similar stack height and feel difference in the ff or difference in the glide ride max you have a partial plastic plate so it's a soft plate it's an eva plate it's not going to be as firm as a carbon fiber plate we're not in carbon county this morning we are in nylon nation and it stops at right about here so watch this if you see me rolling if you see me bending you can see i can flex the shoe right at the point where this asics logo the tip of it stops under the forefoot that's where the plate stops so you still get some forefoot flexibility it's not going to be as rigid as a fully plated shoe the 1080 on the other hand this guy is hundo p non-plated soft king the last version of the shoe 1080 v13 still one of my favorites out there and if you're just looking for a soft shoe to go crush the miles and you're, you don't care about it having the latest model number go buy the 1080 v13 you can get it for 110 dollars on running warehouse with the supwall app code that would be my pick over either of these two if you just want a good solid shoe i put 300 miles on that guy but this has firmed up the midsole three to five percent and the biggest difference i've noticed in this versus the older version is the rocker much smoother rocker both of these shoes here have awesome rockers. I actually highlighted the Glide Ride Max in my best replacements for the Socket Endorphin Speed 3. If that is, if you want something soft and comfortable for everyday miles. Again, not a speed shoe. Neither of these two are for speed. So, with that, let us lace up the Glide Ride Max. This is what I'm going to be using for my run this morning. We can do an on foot comparison of fit and feel get some miles in the ASICs, and then close it out with who these are gonna be best for. this shoe has max in its name i wouldn't be fooled into thinking that it's in the same category as the glycerin max and the mag max and even though running warehouse is measuring the stack height as so tall underfoot on the run when i'm running in it it doesn't feel quite on the same level as those two those two other shoes it feels more streamlined and comparing this to the mag max skyward x and glycerin max this is the lightest weight this is the most fleet on foot this is the one that i would pick for picking up the pace doing a progression run doing some strides this one has the most pep in the step now i am going to put on the 1080 here and right away the softer step and feel goes to the 1080 it's more coddling, it's more comfortable, it feels more flexible. And because you have 100% of this fresh foam here, there's not a firmer layer, you get that soft sink in right away. So for walking and standing, if you're looking for soft comfort, the 1080 is gonna take it. Just walk in here in these two, the Glide Ride Max feels a lot firmer than the 1080, which I was not expecting, because the Glide Ride Max is a soft and comfortable shoe. All right, quick walk test. I'm glad I did this walk test here because having these both on foot, I need to revise my earlier statement. The Glide Ride Max does feel taller off the ground. They both have the six millimeter drop, that moderate drop, but the Glide Ride Max, I can feel it having me a little bit, maybe 2%, 3%, 4% higher off the ground, noticeably higher off the ground than the 1080. So on this walk test here, 1080 is giving me more ground feel, more flexibility, and also a softer step in. The Glide Ride Max is giving me more protection and the rocker feels more reinforced. I'm getting more assisted movement. I was gonna say speed assistance, but we're not running, we're walking. So it's more assisted movement. It feels that the Glide Ride Max is carrying me forward and sustaining that motion, put tipping me along. 
better than the 1080. 1080, out of these two right now, it's feeling like the more traditional pick. And that's what I really loved about the 1080 in my first run review. Yes, it's soft. Yes, you have a lot of the fresh foam. It's not a low stack barefoot shoe, but compared to what a lot of what I run, and even yesterday, Nova Blast 4, that's a $140 shoe, undercuts both of these by 25 and 30 bucks. That one feels more cushioned, more high up off the ground. It's not as flexible as the 1080. So while you do get a lot of soft foam in the 1080, it has some of those elements that you might want from a traditional daily trainer. So out of these two, 1080 feels more traditional. Glide Ride Max has more of that modern rocker geometry with the reinforced feel underfoot from the firmer foam on the bottom and that plastic plate. So with that, it's time to run. Let me lace up this other guy. In terms of the fit, by the way, both of these are true to size. My right or left foot and the Glide Ride Max, you can see where it's coming up in the toe here. I have a finger's worth of rim, similar in the 1080. The Glide Ride Max is a little narrower in the forefoot, but the fit and feel of both of these is great. There's no slipping. The uppers are comfortable. There's no area. I know some people get issues with rubbing in the back. Both of these have padded uppers. And generally when I don't talk about the fit and feel of an upper, that means there are no issues. But I, I don't think anyone's going to have any issues with either of these in terms of rubbing or blistering on the top of the upper. Where you might have issues is narrowness of the toe box. The, the Asics is... A little narrower similar feel to the magic speed four but plan for this morning's run we're gonna do eight miles a nice eight mile recovery run might be my only run of the day i'm not sure yet we'll do that in the glide ride max and then i could give my final thoughts on who should buy each of these let's do it Oh man, I am super clunky this morning. I drove Mason to school and it took an hour to get there and back. Oh, my hamstrings and quads are both shortened. And man, we're talking about upper issues. Oh, hold on. This is the earliest I'm ever stopping a run. I got this same exact issue in the Magic Speed 4. I'm not sure what it is, but something about these uppers and the lacing hits the top of my foot on the left side in a super weird way. So I'm gonna do a retie here. This usually fixes it. It's usually when I tie the left shoe too tight, so we'll loosen. But Magic Speed 4 and this shoe are the only two shoes that have done it for me. Alright, not really better, but we'll work through it. Other than that upper issue though, this is an awesome shoe. I did want to give some in the run, on the run thoughts here before we do the full breakdown because I've enjoyed all of my miles in this shoe. Soft, bouncy, good roll, and it's not too soft. Now out here on the run, it's not as soft as Glycerin Max, and it's not as bouncy as Mag Max, not as protective as Mag Max, but if you're looking for something that's Max, but not Super Max, this is a good pick. I still will have a place for this in my rotation for those days where I want comfort, but I don't want to be suffocated in foam.
first straightaway here. Legs are feeling okay after shaking out the car. I did hit a 20 mile double yesterday with a morning workout, but I'm easing back into high volume training. So not too much volume on the legs right now, but I'm gonna keep this run in the aerobic zone. So general endurance building zone, not gonna throw any pace pickups. And that's what this shoe is perfect for. Man, we're almost at two miles here. I feel so tight this morning. This is just not fun. The combination of the 20 mile day and then 75 minutes sitting in the car this morning. I'm gonna jog it out two more miles and then hit some strides at the halfway point. See if I can get the mechanics feeling more fluid. Just did some baby strides to wake the legs up. I am fatigued today. My legs have no popituity. But this is why I like highlighting these shoes across a bunch of different runs, a bunch of different days. Today when I'm tired, I'll tell you right now, this shoe doesn't feel as good. It is feeling soft. And like it doesn't have as much bounce and assistance as I'd like. But we're gonna close it out here four more miles and I can hit you with the full breakdown. Dude, today, this just feels too soft for me. And recently, I just haven't been vibing with super soft shoes. I think I'm losing my membership card in the soft squad and I'm joining the rigid renegades or maybe just the Goldilocks goons. We need that not too soft, not too firm. Follow the Goldilocks goons. <laughs> it looks like I'm running on some melted haagen right now. Bro. 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 Broski. Broseph. Bro Chacho. Bro. 8.23 pace. No, that's not 8.23 pace. That's 8.23 miles. Bro, our new route right here, the 8-mile loop, is giving us the Kobe Jordan every day without even trying. 8.23. We're just banging them out. 8.23. 8.23. That's an auspicious sign right there. 7.42 pace, 1 hour, 3 minutes, and 19 seconds. And here's the thing. That run was moderately to maximally unenjoyable, but we still dropped another hour of aerobic bills, bills, aerobic base building time. One more hour in the bank. Let's go. And I, I have something to tell you. I think I might hate soft running shoes now. I might not like these soft boys anyway. They too soft. Who are you calling it soft? You're too soft. Man, yeah, that was not a good run though. I'm... I'm tired. I'm just tired. There's no, there's no other way to say it. I'm just tired. I need to take a rest. Not a rest, but recovery. That was eight miles of recovery. Here's the beautiful thing about being self-coached. I can know when to push and to pull. And with the number of miles that I run, I'm really in tune with my body. So even though that was, that was a 742 pace, if you watch this channel, I've seen my runs before, that doesn't seem super slow, but I can feel any time right now where I'm dropping below a 7.35 pace on an everyday run like this, that means I need to be in the recovery zone. So I was throwing some 750s and 755 miles there, which earlier this year, I was running everyday miles in that zone. But right now, that is recovery, and I was running there because it just did not feel good to be running any faster. So what I do now, when I can feel that I'm this tired, this fatigued, Bang calories, of course, but that's that's not enough. We need to take the next session really easy. So if I do decide to run this afternoon, I'll see. 
I'm going to go four miles. That's it. And then tomorrow I was calculating weekly mileage in my head during that run. I'm shooting for 80 this week. I'm still rebuilding back to hundred after this race. I'm at 40 right now and I'll do probably 18 to 20 on Sunday. So I need to get 20 tomorrow, Friday, third, uh, Friday, and Saturday. So instead of doing a full 10 in the morning tomorrow, I can break it up to do six in the morning, four in the afternoon, still get that 10 miles, but breaking it up, you get two sessions. And the benefits of that is you get more growth hormone pumping through your body to recover on each session. Then the other thing is the wear and tear is lower. You're depleting yourself less, depleting the glycogen stores less. I also learned that the benefits of the growth hormone, you get a 550%. I learned this in the Science of Running book that I was reading last night. You get a 550% boost in growth hormone, which helps you recover every time you do an exercise bout of 30 to 40 minutes. And then anything beyond 40 minutes, the marginal gains. So the additional benefit is so small. You only get an additional 50% boost on top of that 550. So it's not going to make a huge difference. You're not going to get a bigger recovery benefit going eight miles or 10 miles straight. Instead, if I go six and then four, I'm getting that double dose of growth hormone without the additional wear and tear. Boys want to talk about science. Science? <laughs> they want to talk to me about science, P. Glide Ride Max and the 1080 here. Two very soft shoes. Out here like the Patriots offensive line right now. Yeah, I, I think I might hate soft shoes now. I don't like the feeling of running on pudding. I don't like the feeling of fighting against the foam. And a lot of these soft shoes these past two, three weeks are giving me that. And this is, a, so I know this is a comparison of these videos, but it also goes to show you different phases of training, what we're prioritizing, how we're running, how we're feeling can really affect our relationship to these shoes. It also goes to show the benefits of having a running shoe rotation. So if you have two or three different shoes, you can choose based on what you're looking for. So earlier this year and late last year at this time, I was loving soft shoes. I was loving the 1080 V13. I was loving the Vomero is on the softer side, but a lot of the soft max stack shoes. And throughout this year, I've had periods of liking them and not liking them. But man, ever since the Balos, I took that to 100 miles. That's what started flipping it for me. And then I gravitated to the Skyflow. I really love the Mag Max, which isn't a soft and squishy shoe by any means. It softens up and it becomes, in, it comes into that Goldilocks zone, but it's not a soft step and feel shoe. So phase of training that I'm at right now, I'm enjoying more structure. I'm enjoying more bite to my shoes. Yesterday I ran the Hyperion Max 2 in the morning. Loved it for my workout. For workouts, I generally prefer firmer, more aggressive shoes, but even for everyday miles, man, when I was using the 1080, I used it for the shakeout before the marathon, and I just said, man, this is this is too soft right now. And some of these soft shoes don't give me that efficient feel that maybe that's more of what I'm seeking out right now. But we got eight miles in the Glide Ride Max this morning. It's a solid shoe if you like soft, but today was the first day where I wasn't really feeling it. So let's talk about the good things about this shoe. The rocker here, nice and prominent rocker. It tips you along, way more of a rockered rolling feel than the 1080. So if we're comparing these two based on the ride experience, if you want an aggressive rocker with the roll, I would go for the glide ride. The glide ride also does feel more protective. So though it is soft in the forefoot and soft all throughout because of the few additional millimeters of stack you're getting in the forefoot, you get more protection here and you get some more pop from this top layer. So softness goes to 1080 V14. This is even softer than the Glide Ride Max. The roll and rock goes to the Glide Ride Max. Now fit and feel, both of these is great. I don't have an issue with the comfort. These are both comfortable shoes, but man, soft, I can keep coming back to it. These are our soft shoes. So who should buy each of these shoes? I'm gonna tell you right now, 
1080, if you're looking for a daily trainer, something to crush everyday miles, you want some ground feel and you want flexibility, this is a good pick. The Glideride Max, to me today, this is, and I think this is why it's been slept on, it's in a no man's land, it's in an in-between zone, and the 170 price point even suggests that. That is not a common price point for everyday running shoes, for daily trainers, and even for max stack shoes. You have the 160 shoes, like the Nimbus, the Triumph, the Hurricane, the Vomero, and then you go up to the 200 with the super max stack shoe. And the, the biggest thing that I discovered from my run in this this morning, this is not a super max stack shoe. All of the $200 super max stack shoes that give me the sensation of wanting to run more, of giving that additional benefit of fighting back. This is a shoe where on a run like this morning, where I just was not feeling it, it's not giving me the additional benefits that you get from a Skyward X, a Glycerin Max, a Mag Max, or even the Super Blast 2. But if you're seeking out a soft rolling ride, this is a great choice, but just keep in mind, it's not gonna give you a lot more than what you put into it. And that's the difference between the $160 and $170 shoes and the $200 shoes. And that's the same thing with the 1080. These do not have the race foam in there to give you a lot more bounce than you put in. They're gonna give you whatever you put in. They're wor both workhorse, soft workhorse shoes. So that's how I look at these. Two good soft workhorse shoes, if you like soft. I'm gonna go ahead and recommend to most people the 1080. This is tried and true. This is tested and after the run that i had with the glide ride max this morning i'm not seeing much marginal benefit out of that shoe versus the 1080 i wouldn't pick either of these for speed workouts i wouldn't pick either of these for banging out 20 to 22 mile long runs i would go ahead and go for more of a speed oriented shoe or a support oriented shoe like the dva nitro 3 hyperion max 2 hokamok well i haven't tested that on a long run but hokamok x2 or one of those max stack shoes my favorite of the bunch right now is the mag max and the skyward x is also a solid option so two good shoes two soft shoes my preference is leaning to the goldilocks goon zone and what was the other one the rigid renegades <laughs> give me give me a nice rigid platform another video that goes to show i take the mag max out of either of those two that's that's the top dog for me right now i told you i found my super last that's the mag max so for most people i'm gonna recommend 1080 this is also my pick for walking and casual use there's a bunch of colorways of this this is my least favorite colorway this is the third grade v12s this is also a pretty mid colorway but lots of cool colorways on this use my running warehouse link if you're gonna buy either of these or if you're looking for a mileage crusher just go ahead and buy the mag max that's my top pick right now that's my top pick man i think the mag max ruined everything for me i might have to do my afternoon run in the mag max so that's all i have for you guys today keep stacking keep stacking those miles keep putting in the work i'll see you over on the stuff wall app and i'll be back tomorrow with another video One more thing, so the firmer I'm talking about, I hate soft shoes this, I hate soft shoes that. The firmer a shoe is, the better it's gonna reinforce the rocker, the less energy feels wasted, the more efficient we can feel. That's why I've been going to the softer shoe or the firmer shoes, they make me feel more efficient. They make me feel like I'm getting more from each stride, especially if that comes with a bouncy race foam or a plate. But I don't like running every day in plate. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bro, look at this. Dude, came back to the, from the run with the fresh, what is this, breakfast burrito? Courtesy of Charles and Suffolk Kitchen. I don't even know what's in this. One bite, everybody knows the rules. My general rule of thumb is if you see a random burrito, don't bite into it. But if it's in your own house, definitely bite into it. Insane. Rice, beans, vegan chorizo. And the tortilla is warm still. Fire. Shout out to Charles and Supple Kitchen putting in work.